Facebook this week. I've got it at his head, the name is Howie Melody, now he's a man under the oak tree. God, what? Melody giggled. Chicken pox? You should get a job with the circus, you're so funny. Eddie snapped. Go on, Howie urged. What were you going to say? I know how to prove Mr. O'Grady isn't a leprechaun, Eddie said. How? Liza asked. If he's a leprechaun like you think, he'd be able to out-trick me, Eddie explained as he grabbed his book bag and headed inside. Wait, Melody yelled. It could be dangerous to make the leprechaun mad. But Eddie didn't listen to his friends as they followed him into the school. You don't know who you're dealing with, Howie pleaded. Mr. Potato Head doesn't know who he's dealing with, Eddie snapped as he hung his jacket in the hallway, but he'll find out during gym class. Melody, Liza, and Howie tried to talk to Eddie during class, but Miss Jeepers flashed her eyes to silence them. For once, Eddie didn't mind. Just before gym, Eddie raised his hand. Yes, Mrs. Jeepers asked in a strange accent. May I please be excused, Eddie asked as politely as he knew how. Miss Jeepers raised her eyebrows and looked hard at him, but then she slowly nodded her head. You must hurry. We'll be ready to leave for physical education in less than five minutes. Eddie nodded and rushed out of the room. He got back as the class was lining up. Nobody noticed that Eddie was wearing his jacket as he slipped into line between Howie and Liza. What are you going to do? Liza asked with concern. Eddie patted his bulging jacket pocket. I'm going to prove that I'm the master trickster. The third graders entered the gym. Mr. O'Grady was standing on the other side of the gym, bouncing a basketball. He looked from face to face, but he didn't look into anyone's eyes. Top of the morning to you, he called. Won't you be joining me for a little game of basketball? Eddie beat everybody to the other side of the gym and stood in front of Mr. O'Grady. The little man glanced at Eddie's raised hand. What would you be wanting? Mr. O'Grady asked. Eddie looked at Howie and grinned before he answered Mr. O'Grady. Can we dance again today? I thought you I thought you would rather be a shooting hoops. Mr. O'Grady glanced around the gym, but twould be a pleasure to be teaching you another Irish jig. No, Eddie interrupted. I want to teach you a dance of ours. Mr. O'Grady touched the leather pouch hanging from his waistband and gently tugged at the string. And what might you be caught in this dance? Eddie grinned as he pulled a small jar out of his pocket. It's called Honey Bee Waltz, as he yelled, or he yelled as he unscrewed the lid, and it's guaranteed to keep you hopping. And with that, Eddie lightly rolled the jar toward Mr. O'Grady's feet. Carrie was the first to scream, Bees! Watch out for bees! And then she ran out the door. Here's a picture. The jar broke and honey bees swarmed out into Mr. O'Grady's bright red sweatsuit. Watch out, Liza screamed, they'll sting you. But Mr. O'Grady didn't seem to didn't seem upset at all. Instead, he reached into his leather pouch and pulled out the small red stone. One by one, the bees flew away and out the open gym window. Wow, Howie yelled, how did you do that? To be sure, Mr. O'Grady shuckled. Twas just a bit of Irish luck. But since you like to dance so much, we'll have another jig tomorrow. Howie jabbed Eddie. So much for your honeybee waltz. Quiet, Eddie muttered as he plopped into the bleachers. It was then that Eddie found out not all the honeybees had left. Ow! Eddie jumped up and grabbed his behind. I've been stung. Look, everyone, Melody yelled. Eddie's doing the honeybee waltz. All the kids laughed as Eddie raced out of the gym.